Hello there, my friendly gun aficionados, and welcome once again to my Warhammer 40k Imperial Armory lore series, where we talk about the various guns of the Imperium of Man. In today's episode, we are gonna be reviewing sort of a blast from the past, since these weapons are very, very old in terms of their origin. And I am, of course, talking about the stub guns, stubbers, and heavy stubber machine guns. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what these things are and how they work, shall we? Stub guns, or slug guns, are a name that refers to a wide variety of low-velocity, high-caliber pistols, not to be confused with auto pistols, though. They resemble 20th century revolvers or semi-automatic pistols and fire solid bullets, usually one at a time. Being among the easiest firearms to manufacture, they are common on Imperial worlds, where they are often called by local names such as sluggers, smokers, or shooters. These weapons are generally locally manufactured or jury-rigged from parts of other weapons. Stop guns are commonly used by hive gangers, criminals and other citizens feeling the need to defend themselves. Because of their availability, they are often used by chaos cults as well. Infamous for their poor accuracy and unreliability, stop guns are not usually considered a military weapon. But, as well as auto pistols, they are sometimes used by guardsmen as a backup weapon especially by the ones using unreliable melta or plasma weaponry. Although there's many patterns of this gun, it is believed that in wide lines, these are its general characteristics. A length of 26 cm, a barrel of 17 cm, a weight of around 2 kg, a caliber of 6.2 mm, a feed of 6 to 12 rounds per magazine, and a muzzle velocity of 220 meters per second. A few notable patterns and variants this gun comes in are The Scipio pattern. This pattern is used primarily by the Imperial Navy, and fires fat, blunt, man-stopper rounds. It holds ten of them, spring-loaded into the slide inside the grip. The famous Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn used a Scipio pattern stop gun. The Hax Orflak Armsman 10 pattern service pistol. This bulky and intimidating high capacity stop pistol is a copy of the traditional Scipio pattern naval pistol. It is a common sidearm for enforcers, household troops, and mercenaries throughout the Calixis sector and has been mass produced for centuries under contract to arm the Magistratum cadres of Scintilla and many other worlds. Also, the variants this comes in are The Stub Revolver This one carries fewer rounds than most pistols, but it is very reliable and easy to operate. As shells can be loaded individually, it is relatively easy to load in specialized rounds. It is one of the most ancient pistol designs and can serve as an ideal backup weapon. The Stub Automatic Unlike the Stub Revolver, this pistol weapon also can fire in rapid semi-automatic mode as well as single shot. Like the auto pistol it resembles, it is easy to produce and maintain, but less accurate at longer range. Just as common as the revolver variant, the stub automatic is less reliable, but allows for a greater rate of fire and clip capacity. The Macro Stubber This type of antique weapon is used by the Adeptus Mechanicus tech priests and is able to hurl out a thunderous cloud of solid slugs. The Stub Carbine the stop carbine, though small, has the stopping power of the heavy stubbers mounted on the vehicles of the Imperial Guard. When a squad of Sicarian infiltrators opens fire with these weapons, the air fills with an avalanche of solid shot that chews their victims into shreds. Next, I would like to talk about the bigger cousin of the stop gun, aka the heavy stubber. A heavy stubber is the name given to a range of heavy-barreled auto-weapons used for sustained fire. 
Like autoguns, they are easily manufactured and maintained, and are commonly used by Imperial Guard forces across the Imperium. A mainstay support weapon on lower technology planets that cannot maintain laser weapons in working order, the Heavy Stubber is ideal for fighting off large numbers of enemies or even lightly armored vehicles. Its high rate of fire makes up for its lack of strength and armor-piercing capabilities. Heavy Stubbers are often pintle-mounted and used as close defense weapons on Imperial Guard vehicles, when the rarer Storm Bolters are not available, and also for anti-infantry and light anti-aircraft fire. Some Imperial Guard regiments use Heavy Stubbers as heavy weapons for their infantry squads. The origin of the Heavy Stubber lies in mankind's past, in its precursor, the Machine Gun, which dates back to at least the late second millennium. These early machine guns came into their own in the early third millennium, and the Heavy Stubber is the modern version of this heavy automatic ballistic firearm. It is a tried and tested weapon that has stood the test of time only to become the Imperial Guard's most common used long-range anti-personnel weapon. The weapon is based on an extremely ancient design, making it too heavy to carry manually, and is thus most commonly mounted on Imperial Guard vehicles. In this capacity, it serves either as an additional crew-mounted weapon, or for close-in defense. In penetrative power, the Heavy Bolter has superseded it as an infantry weapon, but it has survived in use thanks to its reliability. Affectionately known as Big Stubbers, the Heavy Stubber has an extremely high rate of fire, which goes a long way in making up for its inability to pierce armor thicker than flak. Heavy Stubbers are extremely effective when deployed against massed formations of light armored enemies. It is a weapon that has passed into the hands of many Imperial civilians and ad hoc militias, rendering it a favored weapon of insurgents and other troublesome factions. Though most stubbers are poorly maintained and tend to jam often, thanks to incorrect cleaning, care has to be taken when approaching an enemy bearing such a weapon. As stubbers, they fire characteristically oversized rounds, making them very inaccurate over long range. But their belt feed and high rates of fire make up for that shortcoming. Many patterns use an ammunition belt of 100 rounds, though this often requires a loader to ensure the feed doesn't jam. Heavy stubbers can also be used with an ammunition drum, changing the clip size to 40 rounds, but decreasing the reload time. Due to their size and weight, heavy stubbers include a bipod or tripod mount and must be fired from a prone position to avoid the punishing recoil, though some very strong individuals may be able to carry them with extensive bracing harnesses or suspensors. This weapon is usually outfitted with a backside and foresight for aimed fire, a carrying cradle and a perforated outer barrel casing to aid with cooling. A few well-known Heavy Stubber patterns are The Regular Heavy Stubber This pattern is the most popular among both military forces and hive gangers alike. They are usually employed with a bipod or tripod mount. The Eshon pattern Mark III Assault Stubber A more specialized and advanced variant of the Heavy Stubber this weapon has two barrels that spew out ammunition to lay down a dense barrage of shells. It is often used by special operation forces in quelling armed uprisings. The Eshan is designed to be used with a backpack ammo pack, weighing 25 kilograms and carrying 200 rounds of ammunition. The Eshan pattern is able to be used with any form of special heavy stubber ammunition. The Orflak pattern the Orflak pattern is manufactured for PDF forces in the Calixis sector, and it is widely exported. It uses an ammunition belt which allows for long firing periods. The Ursid pattern A locally copied pattern of the Orflak, the Ursid pattern supposedly originated from the war world of Zaif. It is more compact and uses a smaller ammunition drum, which most users find easier to port and reload. And lastly, I would like to talk a bit about the ammunition of these weapons. 
The good old-fashioned bullets. Hard rounds are common for many weapons within the Imperium, and can vary greatly in caliber and design. Bullets from one kind of firearm cannot be used in another unless they are very similar. For example, bullets used for a stub revolver can be used in a stub automatic, but not in an autogun. Not all munitions are created equal, and there are many enhanced or unusual choices beyond the standard fare open to militants. Each type of unusual ammo can only be used with certain weapons as detailed in its description, and only one kind of ammunition can be used at a time. Amputator Shells Filled with explosive micro-shrapnel, these bullets are designed to tear flesh and shatter bone, causing limbs to be blown away. Bleeder Rounds this ammunition is treated with toxins to prevent coagulation and keep wounds bleeding freely. These shells are designed to burst on penetration and spread the anticoagulants quickly. Expander Rounds Vicious and outlawed on some worlds, these dense shells are designed to shred open after impact, creating huge exit wounds. Tracer Rounds Tracer rounds are anointed with a pyrotechnic alchemical compound during construction, so that they burn brightly and visibly in flight, and allow for aiming corrections on further weapons fire. Tracer rounds are usually interspersed with regular ammo, with every fourth or fifth round being a tracer. As a side effect of its luminescence, a tracer round can ignite highly combustible materials, and so certain precautions should be observed when using them. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about stub guns and heavy stubbers for today. Would you fancy one of these guns if you were to serve in the Imperial Guard? Or would you prefer more advanced Imperial weapons? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was informative or entertaining to you, please remember to click the like button and maybe subscribe for future videos. Thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.